Good morning, everybody. Um, yes, it's Wednesday. We are halfway through the week. Um, I hope everybody is well and you are keeping safe um, and everything is all good for you. Uh, welcome to the STEM Lockdown Digital School. Um, you are tuned into Natural Science Grade 6. Just to remind you who I am, I go by the name of Karabo Hashani. Um, on Instagram, it's KB underscore Hashani. And on Facebook, Garabo Fiona Hashani. Right, and it's always a pleasure having you guys. Um, remember just to keep your chats only related to today's topic. Um, only use it to ask any relevant questions and to use the platform to answer the questions that I may ask you. All right. Um, all right, guys, let's get into it. All right, so yesterday we spoke about plants and food, plants and air, and we basically discussed photosynthesis. So we know the importance of photosynthesis because it provides us with certain foods that we need. Um, not only do humans rely on photosynthesis, but so do animals too. So photosynthesis, very, very important. All right, so that was just basically yesterday's topic. All right, so today um, we're basically going to be discussing an ecosystem, all right? So we're basically going to know what is an ecosystem by the end of this lesson. We're also going to discuss how often does it drain in a rainforest or in a desert, all right? Um, and obviously, we obviously know how people get their food, but obviously we're also going to discuss how animals get their food. Very, very important for us to know that. And of course, why can animals only eat one type of thing? For example, why won't a great white shark, it says start, I apologize. Why won't a great white shark eat kelp? Or why won't a tortoise hunt a dolphin? Kelp is just some seaweed. So these are basically are our objectives by the end of the lesson. All right, first of all, without having a read of what an ecosystem is, what is your understanding of an ecosystem? Or rather, how about you tell me what is the first word that comes to mind when you hear the word ecosystem? What is the first word that comes to mind when you hear the word ecosystem? Uh, Triasha? Uh, Ma'am, I think it's living and non-living things that exist. Okay, living and non-living things that exist. All right. Um, Simone? All right, can't get to Simone. Masodi? Ma'am, when I think of an ecosystem, I think of living and non-living things okay. that depend on each other to live. All right, interesting. My study thinks of living and non-living things. All right. Um, Belenta says habitat. Um, we've got Zamili who says where animals depend on each other. Simone thinks of the earth. Skribile habitat. And Emanuela thinks of living and non-living things. All right. So looking at the picture on your bottom left, it says there, what is an ecosystem? Now, an ecosystem is all the living and non-living things that exist and interact in one place. An ecosystem describes a specific area where the organisms work together as a unit. All right, so all of you had a perfect idea of what an ecosystem is, all right? Basically, when you think of it, living, non-living things, that interact in one place. All right. So we have that it is made up of living and non-living components, living plants and animals, and of course, microorganisms. Um, so those would be your living um, organisms that live in an ecosystem. All right. And of course, your non-living would be air, soil, water, and sunlight. Now, it has everything that is needed to support life in an area, which is oxygen, water, warmth, and food. Now, for the animals and the plants that live in an ecosystem, an ecosystem is basically their house. 
everything that they need is there. Just like with us in our homes, we've got a bed, we've got food, we've got a fridge, we've got, we've got all the things that we need. We don't rely on our neighbors or other people to provide us with certain things. All right, so just like an ecosystem, everything that is needed to support life for that plant and for that animal is in an ecosystem. All right. Now, all things work together in a delicate balance of relationship to survive. Now, basically, in an ecosystem, basically, it's like survival of the fittest, all right? Think about all the animals that live in certain ecosystems. All these animals need to feed, all right? And obviously, now they end up feeding on each other, all right? So basically, an ecosystem, everybody needs to survive, all right? All the plants, all the animals, they need to survive, um, and obviously, an ecosystem is made up of a wide biodiversity that can ensure a healthy ecosystem. Just like we said earlier, there's oxygen, water, food, everything that is going to provide for a healthy ecosystem is what you would find there. All right. All right. We've got Shakira saying that an ecosystem is an area where living and non-living things depend on each other in different ways. That word depend is so, so important, all right? A lot of the animals depend on different objects or rather different um, species in the ecosystem. So depending is very, very important. All of those organisms depend on the water, all right? That lion depends on that springbok for food, all right? And Untapila also says the very same thing, actually, um, very, very same thing that Shakira said, an ecosystem is an area where living and non-living things depend on each other in different ways. All right, I promise you that you two are together because that's exactly the same thing, but that is excellent. All right, thank you, Ntadid and Shakira. So that word depend, very, very important. Now, there are many different types of ecosystems, all right? And a lot. What I have here is just the minimum. There are so many ecosystems. We've got wetlands, deserts, forests, grasslands, mount mountainous areas, the ocean, and of course, rocky shores. So ecosystem refers, there are so many, all right, and in, in each and every single ecosystem, um, there are components there that help for the survival of plants and for animals. All right. Right, now let's discuss the different ecosystems that we may find. All right, now nothing in the world can live truly on its own. All right, now imagine, basically you cannot live on your own. No plant or animal can, and certainly no human can live on its own. That is the reality of it, all right? Living things are connected to each other and they depend on each other and on the non-living things in their environment. Believe it or not, you need the air in the atmosphere to survive. You need the water to drink, all right? We, that's what we depend on. That crocodile in the dam needs that water, all right? To survive so we all basically depend on each other it's just a whole cycle of dependence and how we all depend on each other no one no animal no plant no human can be independent if they are trying to survive now just like we said an ecosystem is an area where living and non-living things depend on each other all right in many different ways an ecosystem can survive on its own without any help or product from any other sources because the living and non-living things in the ecosystem depend on each other for their survival. So an ecosystem all right, can survive on its own without any help or products from any other sources. All right. Now, of course, there are many different types of ecosystems on our planet. There's lots, right? Who can actually just name me a few ecosystems? Let me actually know where exactly they are, all right? Who can name me an ecosystem and maybe in which province or where exactly is that ecosystem? Um, anybody? 
I ate with you gotcha. All right, um, Ntadile says grasslands, deserts, ponds, river, sea, and wetlands. All right, and we've got Shakira also saying grasslands, ponds, rivers. All right, awesome stuff, awesome stuff. I see that you're all giving me different kinds of ecosystem. Simone saying the sea, Zinzi says the desert in Egypt. Interesting, thank you very much, Zinzi. Loazi says pond. So of course we know that there are so many ecosystems that we have in our area. All right, yes, Triasha. Um, Ma'am, there's a desert that I know and that desert is in Nambia. Ah, interesting, have you been there before? No, it's too hard to go there. All right, awesome. Thank you, Trisha. So, of course, that is a desert that Trisha has shared with us. Excellent stuff. And we've got a dial saying the Nile River. Awesome. So, of course, in our planet, we've got rivers, mountains, sea, and rocky shores, ponds, and wetlands. Arctic and alpine tundra are extremely cold regions close to the north and the south poles, right? There are no trees in such ecosystems, but some shrubs and dwarf plants grow in wet, spongy soil if it is not permanently frozen, all right? And they call this the permafrost. So this is basically the tundra, very, very, very cold, all right? Sometimes can even be frozen. Right, so very, very cold, cold ecosystem. And of course, there's grasslands, um, which are inclusive of tropical savannas and temperate grasslands. Lastly, you'll find that we also have forests, including tropical rainforests and forests of coniferous and or deciduous trees in moderate climates, support many kinds of herbivores and carnivores. Has anybody actually went to a rainforest? Um, one of my colleagues went to one in, um, I forgot the country, started the G. No, sorry, in uh, Rwanda. Um, she went to Rwanda and she actually went to the rainforest and she really wanted to uh, see a gorilla, like a live gorilla. She, she really, really enjoyed that experience. But have any of you actually went to a rainforest? Maybe you can just share with us, you know, the habitat in a rainforest, the weather, is it humid, is it cold? Some of the animals that you saw, if any of you have been to a rainforest or maybe even a desert, if any of you have been to a desert, share with us that, that experience, the animals that you saw, the temperature of that specific ecosystem. All right, so while we move on, I will definitely keep checking the chat box just to see if any of you have visited a rainforest or could be a desert or maybe even went under the sea, hey? Uh, maybe some of you went under the sea. Maybe you can explain to us how it was and how the experience was with that. Um, I can share with you my experience. I went to um, Ushaka Marine World in Durban and there was um, an activity called, I forgot, but they put you in some little mask and you go underneath and, you know, you just get to see stingrays and fish. It was very, very nice. Um Water was very, very cold. So, of course, we know that the sea is a bit cold. It was also very dark as well. Um, so, yeah, just please share that experience with us. All right. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff, guys. Um, I see a lot of you saying, so, Zamili, did you go to the Kalahari Desert, the Sahara? Maybe you can just share that with us, please. We'd love to hear how it feels. JD, yes. JD, are you there? Um, I'm not hearing you very well. Maybe you can just type in your chats because I'm really struggling to hear you. Ma'am, can you hear me? Oh, much better. Yes, JD. Ma'am, what's yes. this? When I went to Ushaka Marina when I was small, ma'am, um, they I, I went snorkeling, ma'am, but mm -hmm. it was a bit too scary, so I just sat and then the a small fish was swimming around me, ma'am, because of, there were big sharks inside, ma'am. Oh, my goodness. That's a bit scary. All right. Thank you for sharing that, JD. All right. Awesome. Uh, Maduma. Yes, Maduma. Ma'am, when, when I went to Shaka Marine, uh, I, there were people like 
they they, 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 they there was this other cage so they went inside there were sharks going around so the sharks could not go inside because like man there's a cage mhm the shark diving yes ma'am and have you done it before ma'am have you went shark diving before no ma'am it's too All right. scary ah uh, oh, man you should give it a try let me know okay <laughs> All right, awesome guys. Thank you so much for that and sharing your experiences of different ecosystem. All right. Oops, we missed the last point. Let me just go back. There we go. And of course, different other ecosystems are deserts and semi-deserts. Right. Here are your new words which we will discuss in tomorrow's lesson. Um ecosystem dependent interdependent and permafrost so please can you write down the meanings of those words and we will discuss the answers in tomorrow's lesson so i'll just give you 30 seconds to copy down those words and find the meanings for your homework today for tomorrow so while you copy that down jd yes would you like to share something with us again All right, struggling to unmute you. I'll have to come back to you, JD. Just keep your hand up, all right? We'll try come back to you at some point during the lesson. All right, we've got Ndovu saying that um I went to a rainforest last year and it was very wet and a bit cold. Oh wow, Ndovu, thank you so much for sharing that. So that was an ecosystem that Ndovu went to. It was a rainforest, very wet and very very cold. Oh wow. Oof. Can't imagine how cold it could possibly be there. All right. Um Matlodi, yes. Oh ma'am, I raised my hand by mistake, but I also wanted to ask the question. How come there's only one person in the chat box who chat to everyone? Sorry, say that again. Ma'am, I wanted to ask how come there's only one person who can chat to everyone in the chat box? uh because the host has to do that just to just make sure that everybody sending the right messages so not everybody can do that just the host no ma'am the person is a learner um i'm not aware of that but i'll have a look all right matlodi yes ma'am all right um trisha yes um ma'am on the chat box it says it's privately Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, guys. Remember, just let's ask questions related to the lesson, guys, um, because of time. JD, yes. All right. Still struggling to get to you. All right. There we go. Yes, JD. Dependent means to like um, rely on something, like right. non-loving things and loving things depend on each other. Mhm mm perfect thank you so much so of course now JD has completed one of her words for tomorrow so of course just write down the meanings and we will discuss those answers tomorrow all right a unique south africa now south africa's fynbos region is unique it produces an incredible array of plants and specifically flowers now our national symbol which is the protea grows very wild there right in the south africa's fynbos and nowhere else in the entire world so now we know that our protea flower grows in the fynbos region and nowhere else south africa is famous for its fynbos it does not grow naturally anywhere else in the world Fynbos plants are usually adapted to survive the climatic conditions and frequent fires. The low bushes can survive the harsh windy conditions and the plants produce seeds that can very often only germinate once they have been scorched by fire. Right, scorched obviously to be um heated by the fire. All right then we've also got the Fynbos biome in South Africa has a huge biodiversity in plants and animals. All right so I want you to have a look at these pictures but before you do that all right an ecosystem can survive on its own without any help or products from any other sources because the living and non-living things in the ecosystem depend on each other for survival. 
right now obviously there are many different ecosystems mountains grasslands forests rivers seas and rocky shores ponds and wetlands and deserts now i want you to look at these three pictures and tell me uh, what ecosystem are these pictures made of so picture number one what is that ecosystem number two and number three so with your answers please just write one um, with a dash and tell me what ecosystem it is together with number two and number three so i'll give you just about 45 seconds to get those answers coming in as to what are those ecosystems all right, number one, a lot of you saying grassland. Very, very good. Number one is a grassland, right? You see that because of the very tall grasses, very, very green, and the type of animals that are there. So number one, definitely grasslands. All right, we've got Shakira saying number two is pond. It could be a pond and a wetland. All right, very, very good. A lot of you are saying two is a wetland pond or a wetland excellent how do you know that it is a wetland how do you know that number two is a wetland all right jd says because it's wet all right and the water very very good all right because there's the water and there's a lot of um plants and you know, shrubs growing from underneath, showing that it is a wetland. And a lot of you are saying number three is a desert. Very, very good. Number three is definitely a desert. And we see this by the type of animals that are there. And of course, the brown sand. And um, we know that wherever we see brown sand, that definitely that is a desert. Um, now that we're on the desert, actually, I went to the desert. Um, it was in Inner Mongolia just below uh, Russia and it was so so hot it was crazy hot like very very hot um, didn't see many animals though um, I only saw camels and that was about it I don't know if maybe they've closed them up or something but yeah didn't see any animals except a camel but it was extremely big and very very hot right so that's just you know some of the conditions that you find in a desert Right, very good guys, awesome. All right, now let's discuss grasslands and obviously the type of animals that we find in a grassland. Um, actually, South Africa is very known for a very, very large grassland that they know. Who knows what it's called? Um, very, very popular. People go there for game drives. They see lots and lots of animals. It starts with a K. Who knows what South Africa's very, very large grassland is called? Let me know in your chat what is the grassland. All right, grasslands are very, di is a, sorry, grasslands are a very diverse range. Sorry about that. There we go. Very diverse range of habitat and are all characterized by dominance of grasses and non woody plants. The area of grassland may be very short or very tall and will sometimes include occasional shrubs or tree. Grasslands can be temperate, tropical, and can even be found in the tundra or desert. Many types of animals and insects can be found in grasslands, including lions, cheetahs, wolves, bison, zebra, elephants, rhinoceros, deer, prairie dogs, mice, snakes, wild horses, grasshoppers, spiders, and many types of birds, such as hawks, vultures, sparrows, and quail. So that is a whole variety of animals found in the grassland. Um, and a lot of you are saying the Kruger, of course, the Kruger National Park is an example of a grassland, has so many animals. Who's been to the Kruger before? And what animals have you seen? When I went, I wanted to specifically see a lion. That's what I really wanted to see. Did not see a single lion. I don't know where these lions are, but I didn't see them, except I saw a whole lot of springbok, a lot of elephant and giraffe. So those lions really could not see them. All right, Simone says that, you know, they saw lions, rhinos. Oh, you saw like you saw lions. 
snakes and didn't see that lizard, frog, elephant. All right. Zamili says, I saw a tiger at the Pretoria Zoo. All right, very, very interesting. So those are the type of animals that you'd find in a grassland. All right, the grassland stats. Now, statistics, that's what stats means. Now, different types of grasses and other plants are found in grasslands depending on the local climate and fauna. Fauna is just basically the plants that go, go in the area. Grasslands are hugely important to people because grasslands make ideal agricultural and grazing land. Because of the many invertebrates such as earthworms, lava and insects that enrich and fertilize the soil, grasslands can have the richest soils in the world. In the tall grass prairies of the of, of the American Midwest, some grasses can grow to be well over six feet tall. That is extremely tall for um, grass to actually grow that tall. All right. Now, savannas are a type of grassland that are characterized by scattered tree growth. So it's an area where the trees are basically scattered. One is there, the other one is over there, the other one is down there. So the trees are basically scattered, right? So the way they grow, they are very, very scattered, all right? All right, and we've got our mountains. Mountains are found all across the world and make up about one fifth of the world's landscape. All mountain ecosystems have one major characteristics in common. So they have rapid changes in climate, soil, and vegetation over short distances as you increase in altitude. Since mountains have a wide range of habitats and are found all over the world, they support a large number of different plants and animals. Animals include mountain lions, giant pandas, bighorn sheep, there's an example of a bighorn sheep, mountain goats, and snow leopards. Very, very beautiful, beautiful creatures. And of course, there's bears, llamas, and many types of birds, including eagles, hawks, songbirds, and hummingbirds. So those are the kind of areas or rather the animals that we would find in the mountains. And of course, many insect species are found in mountain areas too. All right, who knows what is this mountain? Who knows the name of this mountain? What is it called? Anybody have an idea? It's the tallest mountain. Who knows what it is? In your chats, please let me know what is it? What is this? All right, very good, Mount Everest. Thank you, Shakira and Zamili. It is Mount Everest. Very, very tall and extremely high. All right, awesome, guys. I see all these answers coming in. Perfect, that is definitely Mount Everest. Has anybody actually been um, and climbed Mount Everest? Then maybe you can share with us that experience, how the weather is over there, any animals that you saw over there of course it is an ecosystem so maybe share with us if you know anybody who's actually been up on mount everest and how that experience was all right weather can be highly variable on mountains weather can change from warm and sunny to cold and stormy in a matter of minutes so mountains really the weather they unpredictable right so it can change within minutes from cold to stormy course sunny to cold with a matter of minutes all right um yes triasha oh sorry i raised up my hand okay all right now the highest terrestrial mountain in the world is mount everest in the himalayan mountain range it is currently 29,029 ,029 feet above sea level now that is so high 
that most people need oxygen tanks because the air is so thin. Now you can imagine that that is high. I can't even begin to imagine how high that could be, especially above sea level. Like extremely, extremely high. Now, many mountains are too high to support trees or sometimes plants at all near the top. So you might find that not many trees um, or plants may grow uh, towards the top, obviously because the air is so, so thin. So survival up there is not very easy at all. All right. Now, these areas are bare, rocky, and often covered in snow or glaciers. All right, so that's what you may find up at the top of the mountain. Snow, sometimes even glaciers. All right, many plants are unique to certain mountain ranges and are not found anywhere else in the world. So you might find that only a certain type of plant grows there and nowhere else in the world. All right, now I want you to have a look at the following pictures and you're going to tell me uh, what ecosystem it is. So number one, what ecosystem is it? I want you also to describe, to describe the weather that you think may take place in that ecosystem as well as the animals that you may find. So three questions. What ecosystem is it? Describe the weather and describe the animals that you may find. All right, got it? Here's the first picture. What um, ecosystem do you think that is? What is it called? What kind of weather do you think is there? And the animals in the area. Um, Matuma, yes. Ma'am, it's a pond ecosystem. Okay. And you, you find frogs. Uh, you find and the the weather it's cold mm -hmm. and you'll find fish. All right, thank you, Maduma. So Maduma says the pond, you might find some frog and some fish. All right. Um I see Atinkosi saying wetlands. Um Emanuela saying cold and probably frogs. Adele saying mountain river. Oh, because you see the mountain at the back. Interesting. And says it's cold, of course, some frogs and some fish. All right, so I agree with you. Um, definitely frogs and some other little creatures in there. Awesome, guys. What about the next one? What about this one? What ecosystem is it? The weather? And what animals do you think we would find in this type of ecosystem? Emanuela says it's probably hot. All right, interesting. Um, let's take a hand. So I've got the same students raising their hands. Need some different hands, guys. Please talk to me. Um, JD, yes. JD, are you there? Okay, we'll have to. Oh, there we go. Yes. Ma'am, uh, it's probably hot or cold, depending where the ocean is. Mm -hmm. You can find penguins, sea animals, or other uh, and plants like seaweed and all of that. So it can be hot or cold, but this one looks like it's very hot. Okay, thank you very much, JD. Awesome, thank you. All right, Nico, you will answer the next picture for me. I see your hand, Nico. All right, so a lot of you are saying hot, and Dovi says there'll probably be crabs. Bilente says whales. Zamili says it's the sea. Hot, and of course, sea creatures. Talia says sea and rocky shores. And Dovu says that it's probably sunny. So a lot of you is saying that it's hot, and of course, Simone, it's a beach, and you can find some fish. All right, what about this one? Nico, this one is yours because you had your hand up. Um, so keep that hand up, Nico. Please tell us what is this ecosystem? What would the weather be like and what animals would you find? Ma'am, it looks like wetland. Okay. Ma'am, um, I think here yeah, you can find fish. Mm -hmm. uh, frogs. Mm -hmm. And 
also piranhas. Ah, interesting. Thank you, Nico. Awesome stuff. Okay, let's see what we got. All right, so a lot of you are saying Shakira says it's a river ecosystem. Um, Zamili wetland with some crocodile. Simone says a rainforest. Ah, I just love how you all see so many different things. That's the beauty of our beautiful brains. All right, um, a lot of you saying we could find some fish, frogs, insects. All right, of course, so a whole lot of flying stuff around there. I agree. Probably some crocs, um, frogs, and do we say sunny? and also probably very, very sunny, could also be raining at some days. All right, what about over here? What ecosystem is this? What animals would we find in the kind of weather in this area? Have a good look at it. What is the ecosystem, the weather, and the animals? All right, let's see, Matuma, would you like to share with us please? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, it's a mountain ecosystem and you can find you can find snow leopards. Uh-huh. And what kind of weather do you think is there? It's cold, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Maduma. Excellent stuff. All right. So mountain ecosystem, probably very cold and probably mountain lions. Adults is cold. Bilente, snow leopards. All right. We've got Zamini saying mountain polar bears llamas and very cold all right awesome all right Adal also says cold we've got Emanuela and Mbile and both saying and on Tadile saying that penguins would probably find some penguins over there and I think we'll see a mountain bay all right and that was the last one all right so thank you very much guys for those answers all right you guys were extremely awesome maybe i'll just take the last hand i see nico you've got your hand up yes nico ma'am mm -hmm. ma'am it's cold here ma'am all right i agree very very cold all right and obviously creatures that enjoy the cold all right, guys, here's a very helpful link for you just to check out. Um, it will help you just to understand ecosystems a bit more. Um, tomorrow, we will be discussing living and non-living things. We are discussing ecosystems. So we're going to be discussing the living and the non-living things. All right. So please do remember to follow us on social media. Um, if you do have any questions, please remember to just email me and I will definitely respond to your questions, guys. Thank you so much for being awesome. You guys are amazing, all right? Thank you for your answers today. Thank you for, for participating, all right? Um, I will see you again tomorrow, same time, and have an awesome day. And bye, everybody.